Okay, our first standard that we're going to look at um, when we get to the human body is we remembered we started out with cells. So it says understand, 7.L1 says understand the processes, structures, and functions of living organisms that enable them to survive, reproduce, and carry out basic functions of life. To break it down a little further, we're going to compare the structures of life functions of single-celled organisms that carry out the basic functions of life, and we're going to specifically look at euglena, amoeba, paramecium, and volvox. Now there are some five basic functions of all living organisms. They all have to move at some point in their life. They all have to take in food. They all have to reproduce. They have to be able to detect their environment, and they have to be able to get rid of wastes. If you remember back in your interactive notebook on page 20, you had to do some lab drawings for me. So you can get those out and look at them, and then you don't have to redraw these, unless you didn't get it done back in September. The first example that we need to look at is amoeba. Amoeba is a single-celled organism that has an irregular shape. I've labeled the nucleus, the food vacuole, and the cell membrane, very basic things. The next one that I want you to look at is the paramecium. Paramecium has cilia, the little hairs that are all over it. It has a contractile vacuole where it actually stores some things and it has a nucleus, so that's the same here and here. Euglena is a little bit different. It has a flagella on it, a contractile vacuole. It has a nucleus just like the others. And it has chloroplast. That makes it a little bit different. The chloroplasts enable it to do some process that plants do. Do you remember what that is? Photosynthesis, you're right. It also has an eye spot. That's kind of unique for these. And then Volvox is really unique because it's a colony of cells. And you have these smaller colonies within it that are daughter cells. And it has vegetative cells. That means they're littler ones getting ready to start. And it's also covered with cilia. Now, the unique thing about all of these <clears throat> different organisms that we're looking at is that they all move in different ways. So motility is the same thing as mobility, and it means that they, how do they move around? Amoeba has cytoplasmic streaming, and that means all of that liquidy jelly stuff like you'd find on the inside of an egg before it's cooked. It's runny, and it all rushes out to all the different legs, and it produces something called pseudopodia, or pseudopod is one of them. Pseudo means false, podia or pod means foot, and it actually grows out of false foot and it grows around whatever it's going to eat. It makes a vacuole so it can store it and then it digests it. Pretty cool. Um, a paramecium is different. It has cilia all over it. When I think about cilia, they're little hairs. And if you think about my fingers as the cilia, they actually move in metachromal waves, which means this one goes, then this, then this, like this. And that is how they move around in metachromal waves that kind of whoosh them around. Euglena has a flagella which moves like a whip on the end. It also has the chloroplast that allow for photosynthesis I mentioned a minute ago. And it has an eye spot to help detect its environment. That's what's unique about euglena. And it gets around, like I said, with flagella. Volvox is a colony of ciliates. That means organisms with cilia. Some of them could contain chlorophyll. Some of them probably do. So if they have chlorophyll, they also can undergo photosynthesis. Not hard, pretty much a review. Actually, you should have all of that on pages 20 and 21 of your notebook. Check it out and make sure you know them.